What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com at the airport because we got an early morning flight to head back to Detroit. Tampa was absolutely awesome. But, you know, these trips are always very, very eye-opening because I learned some stuff about myself while I was here. And so this video, to a larger extent, will be five things that I realized myself or about myself or had a revelation about as a result of being here. And this happens often. And often at times this happens with people that are very well um, always trying to figure out how to level up, be better about themselves, and is willing to look inward in order to try to determine how they can do things differently or level up and just continue to evolve and just go to the next level. All right, so um, headed over here to security. Again, it is very early in the morning. It is 5 a.m. and I have a 6 a.m. flight and Rita is with me as usual, always with me, always on my side. And let's get into it. The first thing that I've decided to do is place more of an emphasis and spend more time on my physical health. As a matter of fact, my physical health is now going to be my top priority. Before, I spent more time focused on the bag. The bag was number one. And obviously, we're not taking into consideration like, you know, your daughter and all of that other type of stuff. But as far as things that I'm focused on or was important to what I was focused on from my daily growth or whatever like that I was focused on the bag for a long time and so as I detailed in the previous video I spent more time being focused on that you want to go on the escalator thing I spent more time being focused on that than anything else so yeah my physical health that's the priority and nothing more so they finally got the gym together in my building that'll be dope but we all know and we've done this before that is 90 percent of what you put into your body and about 10 percent working out so you know it's just being disciplined which is really easy it's really simple and then we're gonna get the results but here's the thing i'm not just trying to do the the ideal weight and you know everything like that the most important thing for me is well not the most important thing but we just want to make sure that we in peak physical condition I mean my body needs to be a reflection of my bank account and everything else that's going on in my life and so that's my final form that's the thing that we gonna focus on to a T I mean I'm gonna push myself to the highest limits that I can push myself physically. And so I look forward to taking you guys on that journey with me. Number two, as of this moment, based off of what I've seen over the last week or so, I choose Tampa over Miami. I didn't even realize it um, of how awesome Tampa was. I'm so glad that I visited for the first time. And as a matter of fact, the interesting thing about it was um, after I had got off a coaching call, I was talking to one of my Patreon members, and he's a businessman, so on and so forth. But he was like, you know, we was going over different cities in Florida because I didn't even know where we was going to go. I don't know, like a couple days prior to us actually flying out. So we booked our tickets, you know, last minute pretty much compared to, you know, how early a lot of other people book. Not a big deal at all. But... You know, we was going over different cities and we was in this city and that city in Florida. And so we decided to go to Tampa. Now I'm rethinking everything. I'm rethinking how I'm going to, um, you know, which place I want to spend my winters in, you know, setting up my businesses, so on and so forth. And I haven't even really done a deep dive with Rita, but, you know, again, based off of our conversations that we was having, even as is uh, recent as yesterday, Rita seems to be more aligned with Tampa than we are with Miami anyway. Let me tell you the differences. Let me tell you what's interesting about Miami and what's interesting with Tampa. 
So the thing about Miami is that Miami probably has the most ideal weather of anywhere in the United States outside of Hawaii in the wintertime. That's the biggest factor. But what can I trade off? Because if you compare Miami to somewhere like or in Orlando, weather-wise, right? If you compare those places, then you would have to say that there's a huge difference from a weather perspective, even though Orlando is pretty warm in the winter compared to most places in the United States of America. It's not even a comparison. I mean, you can be 10, 15 degrees um, colder in Orlando than you are in Miami. Now, I would never consider moving to Orlando because it's just more of a touristy destination, right? Too touristy for me as far as like nothing really be able to do is, you know, Disney World or whatever. But Miami is more of like the city city. Like it's everything there. It's everything to do. But it's like on 100% of the time. It never really turns off. Traffic is bad. People drive like banshees. I mean, things that I can deal with, obviously, because I still love Miami. But, you know, I'm not really the South Beach none of that type of stuff right um but tampa a lot of people was just not up on tampa i mean some people are going to be up on it as a result of watching this video but not enough to make it as significant of an impact from a moving there perspective as far as i you know my mindset right but tampa based off the little bit of research and i need to do some more research but based off of the little bit of research that i've done their weather is pretty comparable to Miami, right? And I can deal with that. Like the trade-off, considering that it is still like city, but it's just not on 100% of the time. You can kind of get away from things. You can kind of, you know, sort of pick and choose when you want to be in the thick of things and when you want to just chill out. But the weather is still dope. The city is still awesome. There's still a lot of places to see and do. The people is absolutely nice and the driving is way better than it is in Miami. So it just depends on maybe how old you are, what you you know, what you're looking for in life, how fast you want life to move at that particular time. And I mean, it's not like you can't hop, skip and jump over to Miami just like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's so many options to get over there. And another thing that I really like about Tampa is that it's right around everything else and all these other places that's awesome a little over an hour to get to orlando you can shoot down to naples you know it's a lot of a lot of interesting options for you to be able to go over to without even jumping on the plane so yeah tampa as of right now is really number one on my list as far as desirable places to be at home sweet home i love being home hey, you know life is good when the views and the spaces that you're in when you get home is better than the vacation and the views that you had when you left. You know I gotta show you. You know I gotta show you. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it. So peaceful. Home is a space where I get so much peace and tranquility and love and love coming home to my chick and my daughter and all of that and so it's absolutely great but i think the third thing that i that i gleaned from being out of town let me just sit down and have a conversation for for a hot minute third thing that i gleaned from being out of town is that i got some work to do on the inside also and as much as as much progress as i've made in my life especially when it comes to being strategic. I've always been really strategic my whole life, even when it came to the moves that I made and the games that, uh-oh, super disrespectful. My instincts, and this is the main thing that I need to change, my instinct is always to revert back to the thing that I came from. And that's why we have to continuously unlearn all of this stupid childish mindset behavior that we've been taught and, and conditioned to be within our culture for an extended period of time. But um, my instincts is always sometimes, well, not even always, sometimes my instincts is to revert back to where I'm not far removed from, where I was raised, how people react to things just initially, you know, when they go about doing things and moving a certain way. But, you know, mid 
mid conversation with the gentleman that I was having a conversation with, it was a reality check for me when I started looking inward and I was just like, yo, and then what? Like I always revert to, and then what? When I'm thinking about the results of a conversation or a confrontation or anything like that. So, um, you know, I need to make sure that not only am I doing things that is conducive for whatever it is or the direction that I'm trying to go in, I have to also ensure that every single move that I make is not reaction based, but it's based off of being proactive. So that's just on some strategy stuff. And then on the inside, I also need to make sure that every, every move I make going forward is forward movement. It's never going backwards. I never wanna take one step back in order to take two steps forward. That's dead. It's just two steps forward, three steps forward, four steps forward. Let's leapfrog this thing. Let's just get straight to the bag, get to the money, get to the growth, get to, you know, being the best version of ourselves. And in order to do that, again, you got to constantly reassess, look in the mirror, realize again that the success that you have today has nothing to do with the work that you have to do in the future. And so I'm continuously reminding myself that Anton. You got to keep pushing forward. And I will give Rita a lot of credit on that also because, you know, Rita checked me and she was just like, you know, this ain't what we doing no more. Like, that's not good for your brand. You need to make some changes. You need to evolve. You need to become this, that, and so. And you will have a vision and you have a goal and you need to stick to it. We make changes. We doing things differently. And again, this is one of the things that I've learned about myself by being out of, um, out of the spaces that I would normally be in and then surrounding myself with awesome people like Rita that are, are always focused on what's best for me and see the value in me and ensures that I'm gonna be successful because my success is our success. The fourth thing that I realized as a result of being out there, and it wasn't even a city itself, but it was more or less just a reinforcing of the way that I've always felt and how I see things is that Rita and I is completely inseparable. Like there is nothing and no one that can ever come between us. And I, when I say nothing, I mean nothing. There's been some things that's happened over the past hmm, couple months where I don't even have to say nothing. If something play out a specific way, she's just automatically by default like, nah, if Anton don't move this way, or if you don't mess with Anton, you don't mess with me. And, you know, it's just so dope when you align with someone and you truly become one. I mean, we are so in sync that even before she thinks something or even before I think something or feeling a certain type of way, I can tell just by the way that she's walking and the way that her body moves, if something is wrong with her, if she's seeing things a specific type of way, if she feels bad, if if she's happy, like I can tell and completely understand exactly what it is that's going on with her just by being around her for no longer than two or three minutes. Completely in sync. And again, I, I just can't imagine a life without her. I just can't imagine ever being in a space where she is not by my side. So that doesn't mean that I wouldn't thrive on my own, but I just don't think or operate from the perspective of being in any type of space mentally, physically, outside of exactly where I am. And what that means is, it's never ever going to be a plan B. Plan B is to complete plan A, which is whatever it is that we got going on as a unit, we move as a unit and it just, it's just no other alternative aside from that. So more or less, I just want to convey to you guys that if you look at marriage differently, if you look at the person that you with differently, and this is both for people that are already married, because a lot of times we really don't utilize or take advantage of or see things the way that we're supposed to see it. And thus, we don't really benefit from it as much as we could this is both for married people and people that are looking to get married one day or whatever like that it is a beautiful thing it is so awesome like we got that type of marriage and that type of love that you have from the old school 
where people didn't even consider the possibility of ever, ever getting divorced. That just didn't work. It just don't, it don't work like that. And so not only are we, are we moving like that, but the important thing is that we thrive based off of those circumstances, based off of that mindset. So I put everything, anything that I would ever consider even putting any kind of energy into somebody else, it just goes into her. It goes into what we're building. And so even though I look at things from a business perspective, more or less, and she looks at things from a love perspective, we embrace the things that's <laughs> unique and awesome about each other and just leverage that instead of focusing on how we can make each other more like we are. I mean, we are complete opposites in every way, shape. Hey ladies, how y'all doing? Hello. We are complete opposites in every single thing that we do. Like as far as our mindset and our interests and the things that we like and don't like and things like that, but it works. Like it works like like a puzzle. So yeah, that's it. It's just the reinforcing of the way that I had already seen things. And that's my ace, that's my dog. And nothing and no one can ever say anything negative about her. People can say stuff about me all day long, but about Rita, I'm not having it, I'm not playing it. I just got these in the mail today. Why do I look like a trash bag? What's in this? Oh, these are shoestrings. Hmm. Come on, Nike, y'all can do better than that. These are the new Paul George PS5s. They're kind of dope. You know, the interesting thing about these is that I got an Xbox. I don't even got the new one. But yeah, these are uh, the Paul George PS5s that just came out. They're pretty dope. And last but not least, as I come to the gym and I get ready to really, really get it in, um, because I have a new workout regimen, new workout routine, people, are my true currency. Now, your real true currency, and I say this to people all the time, is your time. Because you'll never get a minute of it back. You'll never, ever, ever be able to go back in time and say, yo, I need to do things differently. And I always say, ignore the bass head way I'm putting on my headphones. So I'm only doing it with one hand considering that I'm in here talking to you guys. But I always say that the problem with humans is that we don't get to live to be a thousand years old. Because by the time that most people figure it out, it's already over, it's already done. And, you know, they don't pass that, that knowledge over into the next generation so that they can do things differently and more successful. Long story short, people are my true currency. When I was down in Tampa, and every city that I go to, I've been to a lot of cities, especially recently. And I know that I'm getting more visibility and more people are starting to catch on and latch on to what's going on and things like that. As I get more visibility, you know, every single person show me love. Nobody has smoke for me whatsoever. And even when people disagree with me, they come up to me and they be like, Anton, I really rock with you. Hey man, I didn't, I didn't really feel you on this particular point. Can you go into it a little bit deeper? And we had a conversation. So people are my true currency because there's a lot of lives that's being changed as a result of the information that, or the conversations that we have on a regular basis. And that's my purpose, is to leave this earth in a better space had I not been here. That's the whole goal. The legacy, the legacy will determine whether or not I was successful in that. So with people now becoming my true currency because you know I've done a lot, you know, I often say, and me and Rita had this conversation all the time, that um, I've lived like three, four lifetimes compared to a lot of other people and the fact that they just let time pass them by and they don't truly do anything that adds value to anybody's life, including themselves. So, you know, I love you guys. And the reason why I continue to make these vlogs is because I want to continue to pour into you guys and I want you to come along with the journey. I live my life like an open book so that we can use me as an example in the conversation and we can leapfrog off all of my mistakes, my successes, and use that to prepare ourselves forward. That's the whole goal. All right. So I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I hope you continue to enjoy these vlogs. Make sure you hit a like for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, tune in to After Hours because we get it in over there and life is good. All right. So until tomorrow. The goal is to continue to vlog every single day. 
But until tomorrow, I will holla at you later. I gotta get it in. Time to get this weight up off me. Time to go to level 10. I love you guys. Peace.